Hi guys. It's been a while, so a little update on the markets. Actually, I have not been following crypto market, but it's still like uh, once a week or once every two weeks I take a look at the coin market cap total value. Last I checked a week ago, it was about 430 billion. So basically uh, nothing happened for um, for about um, a month now. Um, so the bottom was 250 billion and, uh, and it, it bounced strong in two weeks but then nothing happened um, so, so this is in line with my expectation that we were uh, just bouncing here uh, and um, and that after this we will find a new low but it can take a long while and I do think uh, we will see it go higher first before we see the new and final low um, yeah um, so that's crypto um, I think um, it's, it's a very good strategy uh, as an investor to not waste time in a, in a bear market, to just not be a part of it and focus on other things uh, that you have neglected. Uh, in, in my case, um, that's uh, the family life and girls. Um, uh, of course, I've been traveling a lot uh, also during the bull market, but when you're working on crypto, you're always working, yeah, you know how it go that goes. And even though you're traveling, I was most, more than half of the day or even more just on my phone and uh, laptop uh, working on the market so it's really nice to not be able to do I uh, not do that and, and just uh, enjoy other things and uh, I'm here in uh, Kenya checking out uh, apartments and um, it's very interesting to see the re real estate market in a country like Kenya in Africa how different it is from the markets I know in the West in Europe so um, you have two markets here, well, uh, three markets. You have the market for the rich, uh, and, um, and then, uh, so that's the top, uh, top uh, uh, layer of, in Kenyan society, uh, the, the, the people with uh, the, the great jobs. Uh, uh, and, 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 and there, the real estate prices are about half of what they are in the West. So a nice apartment would cost in the West, or in, in Belgium, let's say, an average apartment is 200, but we're not, that, that's, that's, that's not, that's, that's, um, that's actually yeah, 100 to 200 that's for the lower class uh, or the poor uh, in, in Europe but here that's for the rich huh? um, uh, it's, it's just astonishing um, what, what a big divide there is so um, for example I'm looking at apartments to rent and, and I'm willing to pay about 200,000 a month and, 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 and that's about $2,000 a month in rent uh, but, but you know what the rental prices are for the local people um, well, they will pay up to between five to ten thousand a month, um, and, and and these houses they they, they, they are not like they, they do have a toilet, but uh, they are very primitive, eh? um, and so so they are willing to pay about hundred dollars a month. Eh? So so of course the the, the, the the apartments I'm looking at at, at two thousand a month is for the super rich here, um, uh, and and then you have also the slums uh, where people. Uh, and they, they don't have toilets, uh, so it's, it's, it's actually very unhealthy to live there uh, and they pay about thousand a month, eh? so that's about ten dollars a month in rent, eh? but you, you live really uh, in, the, in the dirt. Eh? Uh, but but most, I, a very big part of the population lives in slums and then uh, the majority lives in, in five to ten thousand rent a month. Eh? Um, these are the, 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 the valuations here. Um, and so if you look at investment opportunities here for real estate, um, if you buy an apartment like the ones I'm looking at, I'm willing to pay 200000 a month, rent $2,000, for what price can I buy this? Well, for about um, 30 million or so. Uh, and if you convert that, that's about 300000 US dollars, uh, the same apartment. And that's a very luxurious apartment, very modern, eh? up to Western standards, absolutely. Eh? Um, very, very good looking. Um, and so, uh, um, but what is the return then? Well, if I'm looking at buy versus renting, okay, I can choose to put 300,000 into such an apartment or I can rent it for about 200 a month. Uh, so, th three, sorry, 30 million versus 200 a month. 200 a month times 12, that's about uh, 2 million a year. And so you will see that's about, uh, let's say, 5% to 7% of the, of the value of the property. 
uh, you get in rental income or in rental value if this if you buy this is this for me a good investment no it's not eh? uh, why not well if you would give me this opportunity in the west eh, in Belgium or, 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 or in Europe many places oh that's very interesting eh? or in the US the seven percent return could be interesting um, especially after taxes uh, because of course the real estate taxes can be very high especially in the US I'm just shocked to see there that 2% or even 5% per year real estate taxes is crazy you will not see something like that in Europe or uh, in Africa uh, but um, or in Asia uh, that's just absolutely crazy uh, so if you look at rental income uh, this is almost net uh, so you don't have much expenses when you buy a property uh, that rental income is almost all profit all right, profit uh, dividend eh? so um, that's uh, that's 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 uh, but but in so, so in Belgium that could be interesting eh? or in Europe if you I that, that that is interesting but the big difference here is that actually you can't borrow that money the the, the, the see um, I, if you have 5% rental income that's very nice if you only have like to pay 3% let's say interest rate on a mortgage that's very good and then you make a profit but here you pay 13.5% on a mortgage eh? and you only have 5% rental income which means that if I want to buy a property with borrowed money here I will pay double to triple the amount uh, per month over a period of 20 years or so uh, then I uh, then I pay in rental income <clears throat> but that's not true that's only in the first few years because you have high inflation every year I would say all prices go up at about 10 percent 15 percent per year here so uh, but but you can see that actually this suddenly makes it much less interesting to buy and, and what you see in this market is that it's a cash market most people buy properties cash uh, and, and 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 so interest rate on savings accounts is about eight percent so this is of course always below inflation anywhere you go in the world interest rate on a savings account is below inflation so if you get eight percent that might look interesting in Europe but actually here it means that you're losing also about five percent per year because inflation is about 13 percent per year yeah? so uh, that's interesting um, but I think that 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 for this region here um, if I look at myself yeah, because it like for me I have fiat to invest euros I think the euro is quite highly valued uh, worldwide versus the US dollar uh, and other currencies and, and is all, will, 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 will drop in value so uh, and now I'm getting like a negative interest rate on my euros it's, it's totally crazy they actually deduct money on my brokerage account every month uh, because it's euros <laughs> so, 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 so the financial market is nuts and uh, and 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 of course it makes sense to invest these uh, euros but the question is in what of course and 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 okay I can put these euros here in real estate in such an apartment of say two three hundred thousand US dollars and and have five percent uh, rental return uh, and have uh, an inflation uh, protected asset eh? because this real estate will continue likely to go up with inflation the real purchasing power of of this of this of this uh, asset will not go down eh? because these apartments you buy here you buy in Nairobi okay they are uh, absolutely unaffordable for the middle class here they are for the rich but well there will remain to be rich people here uh, and likely this will go up uh, uh, Nairobi is, is like many cities in Africa uh, sees a strong population growth due to uh, well the general population growing still in Africa a lot but also uh, the flight to cities from the agricultural land eh? um, uh, this process is still abso absolutely ongoing so you buy anything in cities like this and, and the purchasing power will stay uh, will stay uh, will be kept and you get also rental income so it's of course a much better investment than buying my own house in in the West but once you're in Kenya you have many other opportunities eh, or a strong growing country like this instead of buying such an expensive apartment where I prefer to live I could actually rent it and then invest my money into say properties that I don't want to live but that will likely go up a lot more in value like these homes for example in in in, in, in that, 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 that the, the poor or the middle class is living in eh, they pay like 10,000 rent a month 
you can buy these properties for about um, yeah, so you get about 100 120 thousand a year uh, uh, in, in rental income that's nothing uh, you could say that's true but that's uh, the property is also very cheap uh, you can buy these properties then say for um, about 1 million uh, even less maybe 800,000 and so you have instead of a 5% rental income you have like 10 or 15% rental income per year uh, and these properties uh, will likely go up a lot more in value than these uh, rich rich man properties because the rich man properties are apartments in high-rise buildings like you see in the back eh? uh, and, and so actually the amount of land you buy is very low compared to the amount of bricks you buy and 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 in real estate the trick is to buy land not bricks bricks only devalue uh, it's the land that actually can appreciate a lot. So if you buy these poor man's uh, houses in neighborhoods that are now not like the rich would never live there um, uh, and don't go there, it's, it's perceived it is dangerous, but you can buy um, land there with empty land and, 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 and you know, it's a total different world here. You don't have regulations. Eh? Like if you buy land, you can do whatever you want with it. You can build a house or not a house. You can keep it as farmland. You can build a high rise tower as high as you want. Uh, that's how it is here uh, but um, uh, so 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 the returns are just much 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 higher on, on such if you just buy empty land and you keep it for 10 20 years you're gonna make much more return than buying such a, and a very expensive flat huh? um, uh, so so it's always uh, I find it interesting like uh, if you uh, for me if I consider investing in my own house I always compare this with other investment opportunities and my conclusion is always that no matter how high the rental income profit is that you make eh, or the rents that you save can be quite high. Eh, here it's about 5% per year that you save in basically rent by buying a property. That's true but if you compare to other opportunities in that same economy that return is very low. So this is one thing I find interesting. I'm also studying like what countries I want to live in. Um, and Kenya, uh, I find, uh, has a lot of interesting things to see. Of course, I'm here not because I did uh, an analysis of all countries and find this to be the best uh, opportunity. No, I'm here because uh, I, I found a girl here. So, uh, but uh, but but if, if if I look at the situation here, is it an interesting country to invest? I have to say that I'm not so sure because, of course, Africa in general is, I think, much more interesting. Uh, it's going to be much more fast growing and could be the next Asia uh, over the next 30 years uh, but um, uh, I, I think the government has it really in the wrong direction here I see a lot of socialism um, and so um, uh, the idea that well it's good to raise taxes and raise regulations and then have some money to give to the poor uh, uh, or build roads or or give free schooling and uh, so this trend is absolutely ongoing here more and more uh, uh, for example um, uh, primary school uh, used to be a private enterprise uh, you have to pay, parents have to pay for it they raise taxes and they make primary school free is this is this a good deal well for some people it is but on on average for all people it is not uh, um, um, and, and this, yeah, it's 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 the same with the with the roads. Okay, they built some nice highways here. That's good, but the roads, on average, suck like anywhere else. It's, it's worse, of course. It's African roads, so you have a lot of roads. For example, in, in front of these expensive properties, you have roads with 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 potholes that you need really um, a four by four car to get over them. And, and these rich properties are forbidden to fix the road right in front of them to access their property. Uh, if they would fix it, they go to jail because it's a monopolized um, uh, industry like all the countries in the West also. Hey, uh, you, go, you can go to jail just by, by fixing potholes. And, and it's the same here. Um, traffic jams are just terrible eh, because you have, a, of course, eh, socialist roads they don't keep up with the actual real growth and so uh, a lot of people uh, buy a car here that di didn't have a car before and, and so uh, they can't and so uh, during peak hours you stuck two three hours in traffic it's a, it's a, it's a nightmare but my biggest concern is just that they don't have the vision 
Uh, like for example, you want to open a bank account as a foreigner, used to be just walking into a bank with a passport. Now, last year they made new regulations. You need also a government uh, um, uh, tax, taxation ID number to open a bank account. So suddenly you need, that means that you need actually a visa, not a tourist visa, but you actually need a visa to stay long term and only then you can get the government taxation ID number and only then you can open a bank account. I like This is just absolutely stupid regulation eh, that really slows down the growth of a country a lot for uh, because that Nairobi wants to be a financial center in Africa uh, and, and, and do has to have some very beautiful high-rise towers uh, but but of course with such a regulation you're never going to become a financial center uh, so basically they destroying their uh, their financial center uh, uh, situ that they had before that's what they're doing uh, capital gains taxes used to be uh, abolished for 30 years they reintrodu reintroduced them uh, so people that buy properties uh, they will pay um, uh, five percent capital gains tax when they sell the property and they have to uh, pay it upon uh, they have to actually pre-finance it <laughs> it's just like these kind of things you would it's just very very bad uh, and then for example they noticed that the, 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 the stock market in Nairobi <coughs> sees a, a serious decline in, um, in transactions, of course, and then they suddenly make an exemption. If you buy stocks on the Nairobi Stock Exchange, then you don't have the 5% uh, uh, capital gains tax. But if you buy stocks on any other exchange or you buy real estate, then you do have it. So it's just more regulation, more taxations. And of course, some of that money does um, end up being invested in things that have value for people like a new road for example but overall it's just a bad deal and you can see that if you ask people in general how is it going well they are not very happy uh, even though you, yeah they're just not very happy um, and I think a much better policy would be for example uh, that they instead for example privatized roads eh, that would be a great initiative that they allow companies to build roads uh, free enterprise companies in exchange for a profit uh, uh, that they build roads and they can ask toll uh, put up toll boots uh, to their uh, new roads and people pay uh, a small amount to get uh, on those roads this would solve the, the traffic problem immediately would create a boom in uh, in road companies uh, and uh, and that's just that's genius policy of course you don't have free roads then but you have roads that actually are useful because now for example many the many people with money they can't use the roads because they they refuse to stand in a traffic jam for two three hours uh, so so basically there are no roads for people with money now huh? so they just stay home so voila uh, some of the impressions uh, uh, of uh, Kenya Nairobi um, maybe I should also say something about uh, black and white because I've, I've also find this very interesting like here for example you will not see a single white people white person uh, many places you don't see a single white person in the city center of Nairobi you don't see a single white person if you walk there it's full of black people very busy huh? and and of course you uh, many people look at you uh, because uh, yeah it's just not done and, and I find this also quite surprising because um, there's a long history here of white people of course first it was colonized by the English and they have ruled this place uh, and so of course there is some bad history there but um, but 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 I, I, what I really like about this place and I think it's, it's applicable in the whole of Africa there is a discrimination here towards white people but it's not the negative discrimination you have in, uh, in Europe and uh, in, in uh, America and the West towards black people there is a negative there's discrimination there huh? well here it's a positive discrimination if you're white you get treated much better than if you're black e everywhere of course they also expect you to pay um, uh, tips eh? they hope to get tips um, but these tips are so cheap I, if I give someone 100 uh, shillings um, uh, for them that's like they make maybe 10,000 a month so I mean that's the same as, 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 as let's say somebody who makes like 2,000 euro suddenly they get like um, 100 euro in tip that's really amazing huh? that makes a difference uh, well that's the same here if I give someone 100 but what's the value of 100 shilling uh, it's 0 0.8 euro so it's not even 1 euro uh, so if I give someone a tip of that that makes a big difference for their monthly paycheck but for me it costs me nothing 
Huh? So, <clears throat> um, and that's also something interesting and very different here um, compared to um, the West is that human labor is so cheap and that's why I think you will see strong growth even with bad politics eh, of more taxation, more regulation. You can't beat the force of fee cheap labor. Eh? A cheap labor will drive these countries in, in Africa. Many people have to live on, on, on like hundred dollars a month. Eh? That's their income. Eh? Uh, 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 or, or yeah, something like that, two hundred dollars a month. So, I mean, for me, I really don't like to employ maids and, and, and gardeners and, and, and drivers. It's not my thing. I, I'm not raised like that. But actually, if you think about it here, it makes a lot of sense to employ people for, su for such ridiculous prices. You can pay them double what they would normally uh, earn somewhere else, make them very happy, uh, and you get uh, served left and right. Uh, it's actually a great deal. Huh? Um, so voila, some impressions. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed it, guys, and I wish you all uh, a great day. Bye.